Welcome to the first episode of The Amazing Spider Pal. Um, this is a feature that I've wanted to do for a really long time, um, back when Dan and I had the original um, site with the, um, the regular Pal features. Um, this is something I wanted to do, but our schedules never quite lined up. And so I decided I would go ahead and try doing it as a video feature, um, now that the site has changed a bit. And uh, basically, uh, when I was um, in college doing my undergrad, I came across this um, CD set for um, The Amazing Spider-Man, and it had all the issues from 1962 to the year 2000. Now, uh, nowadays, that would cost an arm and a leg on Comixology, um, but I got it for just about 50 bucks or so. So um, I want to start right at the very beginning with um, Amazing, Amazing Fantasy number 15, which is the first appearance of Spider-Man. Um, you have the iconic um, cover, which has been copied multiple times, um, both by um, Spider-Man itself as well as other um, mediums. Pretty much um, every single um, comic that ever has guest um, covers or joke covers will always have a parody of that cover. Um, the story's by Stan Lee, of course, the creator of Spider-Man, and Steve Ditko does the art. Um, and I think what's interesting, um, most interesting about this first appearance of Spider-Man is the fact that, first of all, um, it still um, works today. Um, it still has a lot of um, stuff that's not very dated, um, although there are a lot of ways that the story would be different if it came out nowadays. Um, but uh, it's also um, interesting in what's different from what you know or what you think you know about Spider-Man's origins. So um, basically, um, the first thing that I find interesting is that it opens up with a little text bubble, uh, I mean a little text box where um, Stan Lee has written that in the comic industry we call superheroes long underwear stories and they're kind of corny and whatever, but we think this one's different. and. Um, what I like about that, or what I find really interesting about it, is the fact that what was subversive back then, the stuff that uh, Marvel was doing with their characters, is basically now considered old school. You know, now we go to Image Comics and IDW and Top Shelf and all these um, indie publishers to get something different. But back then, Marvel was that different thing. Marvel was a thing that was different from DC. <clears throat> Uh, also, um, similar or something that carries over, you know, from going forward is Flash Thompson's introduced right here in the first issue. Um, personally, I think that um, they just picked that because he's, you know, he's a star and Flash sounded like a, you know, a name of someone that would be, you know, very athletic. Uh, I don't think they intended for him to become a long running character, but hey, you know, uh, as recently as the 20. 13 or so, he was still, you know, a character in Marvel Universe. And um, what's what's interesting about the way that it originally um, depicts the event where he gets bitten by a spider is that he's not at a lab somewhere. He, he didn't go to some um, field trip to a, a science lab, which I guess they probably do, but it seems... Like that almost certainly wouldn't happen today. There'd be too many chances for contamination or someone getting hurt or something, so, you know, someone doing industrial espionage or something like that. Um, so I don't know why they changed it, um, but he goes to the science hall to see a demonstration. And um, I, I, to me, I would just equate that with, you know, I live in the DC area, um, just going to the one of the Smithsonian's and they're having a demonstration there or something like that. And that's where the spider um, gets blasted with radioactive energy, and then it uh, ends up uh, biting him, and then he gets his um, superpowers. Um, so, obviously, you know, the fact that it's the 1960s, atomic energy is so crazy, and so, oh my gosh, the spider got atomic energy, and even though he does die of radioactive poisoning, somehow he's able to impart these um, superpowers on Peter Parker. A lot of the stuff that um, carries over from the um, Spider-Man that's still relevant today, the teasing, um, the fact that, um, you know, Peter Parker's teachers love him, but the kids are like, ah, this guy's a dork, we don't want to invite him to a dance or anything like that. Um, but some of the stuff that um, doesn't carry over, in addition to the um, radioactivity, 
is that they tell him, you know, he might become famous. He could end up on the Ed Sullivan Show, whereas today he would just have his own Twitter feed, his own YouTube page, make his make himself famous, um, kind of like what they did in the movie version of Kick-Ass. Um, I haven't read the comic yet. I'm not sure if they do the social media stuff in the comic, but it's definitely a big aspect of um, Kick-Ass, the movie. Um, uh, in line with the convention of comics at the time, um, Spider-Man speaks everything that he's thinking or at least it seems that way at first. So he's walking around and he's talking. He's like, I have these superpowers. Look what I can do. This is weird. And he's fighting this guy and he's like, oh, you know, I should do this before he gets me or whatever. And so at first I was just thinking, oh, maybe they had invented thought bubbles. But then later he does have a thought bubble. So I was like, is Peter Parker talking to himself all the time? It's a very, you know, Chris Claremont um, in the 90s was still doing similar things with the X-Men. Um, so... I don't know exactly when things change or, what, or whatever, but reading it, you know, in the year 2015 and going back and seeing this guy t literally speaking his thoughts is kind of weird for someone that's not supposed to have like a mental illness or something. Um, overall, the story is the story that, you know, um, he goes um, to a, you know, some place where there's radioactivity. Uh, spider bites him. He gets spider powers. Um, he goes home. He builds shooters. Um, he decides he's going to uh, fight somebody for money. There's money in that. He goes in the ring. Um, when he comes out, this guy tells him to stop a criminal. And he's like, that's not my problem. And then that guy goes and kills Uncle Ben. But the biggest shock for me in reading this, the biggest thing where I thought, whoa, I thought I knew Spider-Man, but I guess I don't is the fact that Uncle Ben never tells him with great power comes great responsibility. He gets to his house and Ben is already dead. And as he's walking away, there's just a little text box that says, and, P and Peter Parker learns that, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And given the fact that there's so much emphasis in modern tellings of Spider-Man, that Uncle Ben is the person that told him that. It's so interesting to see that the first time it actually appears, that's not there at all. That's actually just, you know, um, Stan Lee providing the moral of the story rather than something his uncle told him. Kind of for no reason, because Parker was just a smart kid. He wasn't necessarily gonna wield power or anything like that. Um, I think it's it works a little better actually in this way, um, although and I would say that it works better and it still gives him the motivation of Uncle Ben dying through inaction. He doesn't have to necessarily say Uncle Ben told him they were great responsibility. Where great power comes great responsibility. So um, there you go. That was the first, um, you know, my first go at this. Um, my, my idea is to go um, issue by issue um, through the entire run from 1962 to the year 2000 of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, we, uh, you know, usually with the regular stuff on Comic Pal, we go um, one arc at a time. Um, at this point, I'm going to go one issue at a time, especially because I have a feeling that the earlier um, Spider-Man stories are probably not going to be great arcs like they are nowadays. Um, we'll see if things change. Um, it's going to appear on Mondays. Normal con, you know, our normal written content appears on Wednesdays. Um, I'm going to do my best to get it every Monday. Obviously, normal life intrudes sometimes, and I can't get it in. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it, and um, feel free to, um, you know, come over to the site, see our text articles, see other video articles that we've done, and um, thanks for watching. Hey, so if you're watching this in uh, 2015. Um, you'll notice I'm wearing the um, Extra Life t-shirt. Uh, I am um, playing for Extra Life this year, so um, definitely feel free to check out my other videos um, here on YouTube from Extra Life. And um, if you like the cause that I'm playing for, which is um, Johns Hopkins, um, they helped my daughter twice um, with some life-saving surgeries, um, please um, donate to my Extra Life page. Um, I'll provide a link um, below. and um, I'd really appreciate that um, because it all goes to a great cause. Thank you very much.